Welcome to chapter 5. This lesson is about rate of change and slope. Our goals are that we can find rate of change from tables and also learn how to calculate slope. So let's begin by defining what rate of change is. Rate of change shows the relationship between two changing quantities. So remember, we talked about this in chapter 4, changing quantities are known as variables. And oftentimes the variables are the labels on the axes, the x and y axes. So rate of change, you can calculate this by taking the quotient, so we have change in the dependent variable on top, over the change in the independent variable. So we are dividing to find the rate of change. In example one, we have a table that shows the distance a band marches over time. So take a moment to look at the table at right. As you can see on the first column, we have time in minutes, one, two, three, four, and then we have distance on the right column in feet, 260, 520, 780, and 1040. Couple questions. Is the rate of change in distance with respect to time constant? And then, what does the rate of change represent? So the first thing that we want to do is calculate the rate of change from one row of the table to the next. So that means we are going to take 520 and subtract 260 from it. So 520 minus 260 over 2 minus 1. When you subtract, you get 260 over 1. We're going to do the same thing now with the next two. So we're doing 780 minus 520 over 3 minus 2. You always match up the x and the y values. So we have the y values on top, aka the dependent variable, the distance, and then we have the time on the bottom, which is the independent variable. And when you reduce that, you get 260 over 1. Interesting, right? Now let's do it one more time. We're going to have 1,040 minus 780 on top. And we have 4 minus 3. And that also reduces to 260 over 1. So to answer the first question, Yes, the rate of change is constant because the rate of change is 260 feet over one minute for all. So I'm going to pause this and write that down and you can do the same. The second question asks us, what does the rate of change represent? Well, think about it. Take a look at the table once more. And we realize that the rate of change represents the distance the band marches per minute. Because we have feet on top, we have one minute on bottom. Remember, that's called the unit rate when the one's on the bottom. So this rate of change represents the distance the band marches per minute. So we're going to write that now. That completes example one, and you can see that this is a real-life application problem. I'm sure all of you band people out there enjoyed this problem. So now we're going to jump into defining what slope is. Slope is another way to say rate of change. The definition is the ratio of the vertical change, or the rise, to the horizontal change, or the run, between two points on a line. So in math form, we have this middle part right here. We have slope equals vertical change over horizontal change, aka rise over run. And I'm sure this is a review for most, if not all of you, so enjoy this review. The main idea of slope is that it describes the steepness of a line in the coordinate plane. And real life examples of this would be finding the measure of slope of a hill, a mountain, a road, or a roof. So feel free to pause here to fill in these blanks. Example two, we are going to find the slope using a graph. So we're going to use the rise of our run that we were just talking about. And let's write that down, slope equals rise over run. We should figure out how much is it rising. So always start with the leftmost point. So we're going to start there. One, two. It is rising two units. And how many is it running to the right? One, two, three. 
So the slope is two thirds. And make sure you draw the arrows on your graph because that basically is the work besides what I wrote down. Now let's take a look at another line. As you can see, this line is going down, so maybe you have predicted that it's not a positive slope, and if so, you are correct. Um, let's start at the leftmost point, and slope is, again, rise over run. We're going to go down one, two, three, four units. Now, if we're going down four, that means it's a negative four, and run one, two, three, four, five. So the slope of this line is negative four-fifths. When the line goes up, it's going to be a positive slope, and when the line goes down, it's going to be a negative slope. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. Here is the key concept. Uh, basically, we're saying that rise slope is rise over run. Another way to write that is y2 minus y1 on top over x2 minus x1 on the bottom. So this is when we're given the coordinate points. So we're given a coordinate point x1, y1, we're given a coordinate point x2, y2, and we're going to be plugging those in. And something important to note is that x2 minus x1 cannot be equal to 0 because we can never, ever, ever divide by 0. The slope formula is especially helpful when we don't have a coordinate graph. So we're going to definitely be using this, especially in the next example. What is the slope of the line through the points negative 1, 0, and 3, negative 2? So the first thing that I'd like to do is label the coordinate points x1, y1, x2, y2. And now we're going to use the formula that we just saw on the previous page, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Substitute the numbers in where they fit, so negative 2 minus 0 over 3 minus a negative 1. On top we have a negative 2, and on bottom we have 3 plus 1, which is 4. And we definitely need to, re to reduce that, and that is simplified to negative 1 half. So that's the slope of this line, and if you needed to graph that, it would look something like that because it has a negative slope. Okay, now we're given more graphs, but this time we have horizontal and vertical lines. So let's begin by labeling our points. Let's have negative 3, 2 be x1, y1, and 2, 2 be x2, y2. We're going to use the same uh, slope formula as before, so I'm going to write that down. And now we're going to substitute in. So we have 2 minus 2 on top and 2 minus a negative 3 on bottom. So we have 0 on top and 5 on the bottom. Well, what happens when we do 0 divided by 5? Well, we get 0. So the slope of a horizontal line is always 0. So make sure you write that down. Okay, now we're on to the vertical line. Let's label um, x1, y1 for the negative 2, negative 2, and x2, y2 for the other point. It doesn't really matter uh, which one's which, so you'll get the same answer both ways if you do the ca calculations correctly. Let's use the same formula once more. And we have 1 minus a negative 2 on top and negative 2 minus a negative 2 on bottom. So we have 1 plus 2 is 3 and negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Well, hopefully by now you know that division by 0 is undefined. And if you don't believe me, feel free to check out the calculator. It will You'll definitely get an error if you try to divide by 0. So the slope of a vertical line is always undefined. Okay, we took a look at slopes positive, negative, 
um, zero and undefined. So now let's just do our concept summary at the bottom. We need to match the slopes with the graphs. The first one, the graph is going up from left to right, so that means this is a positive slope. Conversely or oppositely, the next graph is going down from left to right, so that means we have a negative slope. And the horizontal line has a slope of zero, as we just found out in the last example. And same thing, the vertical line always has an undefined slope. All right, thanks for sticking with me. That completes 5.1 lesson. You can try the lesson check right now, or you can wait until we do these problems together during class. Just make sure you do them before I check the 5.2 notes.